Edge computing is reaching an inflection point in 2021 with the availability of 5G pushing companies to use more edge-enabled solutions. Today on Future Now Talks, my guest is an ICT executive well-known internationally and in the region. He is currently leading the cloud and data center business in Etisalat Digital. Welcome to Future Now Talks, Began Villalonga. Thank you very much, Alia. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Can you tell us about edge computing? What is it and what are the advantages? Edge computing is a, a new trend in cloud computing. It's an evolution of cloud computing. Uh, ultimately, it is an IT architecture for distributed applications that involves placing data, processing, and service provisioning very close to the end user. And the reason why it is becoming more important nowadays it is become, it's because it's becoming uh, very relevant for location-sensitive applications applications which uh, require to be in a specific place. One example are regulated applications where uh, the environments require data to be in, in locally in a specific place. The second reason is because it ensures low latency. So it enables use cases that require very, very low latency. And the third reason why it's becoming very important is because it's starting to use a new generation of IoT devices that are much simpler. And therefore, edge computing is enabling all these new type of devices to be available for these new type of applications. Distributed applications are not new, but why is it becoming important now? Very good question. Uh, it is true, distributed applications are not new. But what is new are the new use cases that are being enabled by these applications thanks to new technologies that are coming online. Uh, the main one is the availability of practically unlimited connectivity brought by technologies like 5G. Everything, everywhere is connected, and this is enabling all these new use cases. Uh, the second is the use of the data provided by this connectivity, thanks to new algorithms in artificial intelligence and machine learning that are making the response to all these connected devices much quicker. And, um, the third is uh, basically the um, availability of all these IoT devices uh, practically everywhere. So everything is getting connected more and more, and therefore all these new cases are becoming a reality. Can you give us examples, uh, scenarios of how edge-enabled solutions or technologies are being used today? So uh, certainly, there's a number of different use cases that are becoming uh, very relevant. The Probably the most famous one is the uh, uh, related to transportation, uh, uh, self-driving cars and automated vehicles, autonomous vehicles, uh, which now are becoming a reality because cars are not connected by only one connection, one line. It's hundreds or thousands of sensors which are connected simultaneously and therefore enabling all the algorithms which are required for a safe uh, self-driving car to operate. Another case can be uh, related to the industrial space, so industrial IoT, where you have sophisticated factories or plants or warehouses where all the machinery can be simultaneously connected to the web and to the cloud and then having uh, real-time analysis and real-time action on those uh, automated factories. So uh, the industrial environment is becoming more and more intelligent. Another case could be, for example, augmented reality, which is something that we are finding for entertainment or for wayfinding in a number of uh, areas. Uh, or uh, surveillance and uh, real-time image processing, which is becoming more and more present in our cities. So if you take all these use cases, you can combine it and create the city of the future. Imagine a city where the cars are driving uh, autonomously, where safety is controlled by artificial intelligence-enabled cameras, where people can move around based on augmented reality, where you can have access to healthcare facilities which are totally automated. So this is enabled basically by edge computing. And the reality is that it's not that far away. There's a number of use cases which are already happening. And even in the UAE, you have projects like uh, Oyum project of Dubai Police, which is a surveillance, an intelligence surveillance system protecting the city. Or you have projects like Hassan Tuk, which are protecting uh, the fire environment, the fire alarm environments in all the houses and buildings in the UAE. All these are good cases of, um, the, let's say, the initial generation of edge computing that will come once 5G is available. Hmm. And what is the role of telcos in this field? 
Well, the role of telcos is relevant because, first of all, the location of edge computing is very, very important. Normally, the location should assure, uh, number one, that the edge locations are very close to the end user. Therefore, they have to be connected to the mobile network. On the other side, the edge locations have to be connected to the cloud. So the connectivity to the cloud is very important. And for that, the edge locations have to be either on customer premise or in the telco uh, service provider environment. So for telcos, you have a, a, a combination of a threat and an opportunity. It is a threat because the new technologies that are supporting edge are not coming from the telco space, are actually coming from the cloud service provider space. Companies like Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, or Google are developing heavily and investing heavily on edge technology. So it's becoming a standard, it's becoming something that everybody will be able to play. Mm. However, the infrastructure required for edge is something that only telcos have because the number of exchanges, 5G antennas, the new developments in radio access networks is something which is very, very close to the telco. So we start with a very unique position in a space that is going to be open and is going to be crowded with competition. So if I ask you about the future, if uh, everything is going to change and you can preserve and protect one thing, what would you choose? Well, I wouldn't choose one thing. I would choose the whole planet and I would choose the nature. I think that technology has to have a very pragmatic and, and clear effect of improving our lives. And unless we protect the planet, unless we protect the environment, there's going to be uh, you know, little to protect in the future. Specifically, I'm, I'm in love with the sea. I, I am a sea person. I, uh, uh, in my spare time, I am a scuba diving instructor. So I really see how uh, the sea is changing due to the human interaction. And um, uh, I definitely would like to pre preserve the sea and, and leave it as a legacy to my children. And if I ask you the other way around, if there is something in the future that's going to happen and you can bring it now, what would you choose? Definitely, and especially coming out of the pandemic, uh, all the research and development on uh, medical advance and, and, and uh, 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 you know, medical development is something that I would definitely bring back to make sure that we uh, uh, can cure all the diseases that uh, are not possible to be cured today. Thank you for joining me on Future Now Talks, Miguel. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. At Future Now, we bring the latest technologies and solutions by collaborating with scale-ups, IoT developers, and customers. And that's what the Future Now talks are all about. So stay tuned.